A DM landed in my inbox this week, and it was from none other than Mike Vardy, the productivity influencer. And it said, have you checked out Livestack yet? Yes, then it has been on my review list. And thanks to Mike Vardy, it's just bumped up to the top. Today, we're taking a look at Livestack. What it does is combine health with productivity and merges them together in an interesting mix that will help you to better plan your energy for the day ahead. We're going to overview whether it's useful, whether it really takes into account your health metrics and brings them into your productivity score, and whether it's right for you, including things like pros and cons after we've had a good old test with it. So welcome, if you're new here, my name is Francesco D'Alessio and welcome to Tool Finder. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. And if you want to check out all our free guides to note-taking apps, to-do apps, and calendar apps, you can find them all linked in the description below. But today we're taking a look at Livestack and if you want to get access to it, you'll find it linked below as well if you're interested. So Livestack is really interesting because what it does is takes into account your energy levels with your productivity and how it does that is by adding three core details to your application and those are your calendar, your health metrics from your wearable and optionally add your to-do list experience from Todoist or Trello. Now, the application is priced fairly reasonably. This is not a free application, sadly. It is actually priced at, I believe, $35 for the year, which at the moment isn't bad if you look at other apps on the market. And it does have some layered functionality, which we'll talk about near the end of the video. So in order to get started with this app, it's a little bit of a pain because you need to start with the iOS app and then add the web version later. It's got an iOS and an Android version, as well as a Chrome extension, which doesn't do too much, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So when you start with the iOS app, you can add some attributes. The first thing you can add is either a Google or Outlook calendar. And once you connect them up, they'll start bringing your events in, including meetings and other such attributes, which is great for just getting a baseline of what your day looks like. The other thing that you can do is add Apple Health if you're on iOS. And I believe on the Android version, there's a Google Health version. Not sure what that's called, maybe it's Google Fit. They keep changing it. So what it tends to do here is import your sleep score and then create a metric called an energy score based on that. So for example, if you have poor sleep, it's gonna give you a lower score. If you have better sleep, it's gonna give you a higher score. And what it will do with that is it combine it with your circadian rhythm, the typical movements of your energy levels in a day, and naturally weave that out for you. So on top of this, you can add Todoist or Trello, which will allow you to import your tasks from those applications, which is a good integration if you're already using a to-do list app like those. They do have Tick Tick coming soon, apparently. So what this very simply does is give you a linear timeline of your day. And essentially from here, you'll be able to see when is best to do certain tasks based on all of those attributes. For example, there's four typical levels. There's a warm up, focus, energy calm, and energy peak, as well as a wind down area where you can see your ups and downs of the day based on not only your sleep data, but also your attributes with your circadian rhythm. Everything's based on a peak energy score. So for example, I've got 91 today, and you can see it in line with a typical Wednesday and the average rhythm of your energy on a Wednesday. And what it will do here as well is it will analyze your sleep based on what type of chronotype you are. And it's indicated that I'm a hybrid chronotype and it's prepared what that looks like in terms of my circadian rhythm. Now, what it actually does is it recommends what type of tasks you can add into your system. So in this case, it's saying for me, adding that task in deep work time, if I add it 15 minutes later and extend it as well, it's gonna increase my energy score by 1.6, which naturally is gonna benefit that. The other thing as well is it also recommends that if I move my call with Liam 15 minutes later, then my score will be reduced by 2.4. So that's an indicator that I don't need to do that. But what's interesting is when you get started in filling out the questionnaire options, it'll ask you how things affect your energy levels. For example, I put meetings actually affect my energy levels and tends to decrease like most people. And now it says that I'm gonna lose an energy score whilst having this call with Liam. So apologies, Liam, my energy is not gonna be lower with you, but apparently to this app, it is. The same with things like exercise. For example, it says with Bamberton that it should recommend it to 850 because apparently that's when I'll typically do a better job. At least this wasn't clear, but these are the recommendations I believe inside of the application. But in all in all, you get the idea of the peaks and troughs that you need to focus on during the day. And that's typically compared to your typical Wednesday. 
day. Now what's nice is obviously it's going to recommend high and low energy events that typically work well with you, but there's no real way to indicate what those were like. But it does recommend you activities to do. For example, in those energy calm times, it says your energy is going to be low. So we typically recommend doing reading or journaling and also things called energy boosters. For example, things that are going to boost your energy back up ready for the next cycle. The same goes with the high energy elements. For example, with a high energy section, you can tackle high priority tasks or analytical work that are quite demanding on the brain. So this is incredibly cool because it gets you an idea of when you're typically going to be best focused. And this is weird because it actually does aggregate to what typically works best for me. But that's because I've been researching this for quite a while in terms of how your typical energy cycles go up and down during the day and mapping to those energy cycles best working for you. So it's interesting how it works. There is also a factor called stress and you can find that inside the application which gives you an indication of your stress score. So you can only currently connect that with Garmin and Fitbit and these scores typically aggregate the stress score from your data source and displays them on the calendar of typical stress levels during those events. So it connects things called through something called Terra which I believe is a third party service to connect wearable technologies to an application and obviously you'll need to make sure you're comfortable with that and what access they get to. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this application because there are so many different ones and I want to share what the pros are and the benefits are that you get an idea for your energy levels across a typical day. Now obviously this isn't going to be 100% accurate. You may woke up in a bit of a bad mood or you might just have lower energy than what your app is saying for the day but actually getting a score and getting a focus and getting an idea of when things best work for you might be an unlock to some of your analytical and high priority tasks. Whereas for others, it might not be. But getting an idea of that can be incredibly helpful. So the benefit of this in the long term is that things like priority and quality of tasks will be much more important as we move towards an artificial intelligence future. You controlling the decisions that are made and the quality of those decisions will make more of an impact than you do in the quantity and the burnout elements that we typically see in a, in a given day. So that's where I think it can be incredibly useful. It was great also to see the Todoist and Trello about to connect as well, even though those options I had a few issues starting with. So looking at some of the cons, when you're going about organizing a task inside of both the mobile and the web version, it was slightly slow. I recorded a one to two seconds slowdown, particularly using the application on web, and that was a little bit painful in terms of compared to other to-do list apps on the market. The Todoist integration did take two attempts to do. Maybe it was because it was an area with slightly bad Wi-Fi, but I don't think I was at the time. I just think this is something that they haven't connected up properly yet. But it all connected well and naturally useful. Now the third con is probably living by a score which is something I want to talk about in terms of this concept completely. Living by a score is an interesting concept. So for example, I wake up every single day and I check my WHOOP score and this is just a fitness tracker. And what it does is it combines your energy spent during the day combined with your sleep and gives you a score of how well recovered you are to take on more physical and mental strain. Obviously the mental strain aspect is very small and the physical mass direct is very useful. So I can wake up in the morning, get an idea of whether I can go and train or do another bit of exercise in a given day. And it gives me an idea of how well I can push myself, which is great because for example, I woke up with a 68 recovery score today. I can go out and maybe do a good amount of exercise without feeling too much. However, sometimes when I wake up, that score puts me in a bad mood because I wake up sometimes with a good level of energy and then my score says 40. And I'm like, whoa, okay, I feel good. Why is this score telling me something lower? And sometimes these type of scores can be incredibly impactful on how your day goes ahead. And sometimes living by a score can be a really ineffective way of going forward. So waking up, and seeing your energy score to be much lower could be detrimental to your own productivity. It might make you go, I'm not gonna push myself, I'm not gonna jump into those decision-making tasks today, and I'm gonna delay them another day, and then the knock-on effect could happen. So those things can be impactful on how you work and your workload, but it could also be 
very helpful. For example, if you got a 50 recovery score or whatever that metric is, energy score, then you got and you took it easier that day, you might be able to play the longer game and reduce burnout. So the idea behind this is trying to focus your energy on giving more quality focus to your tasks. And that's a good thing. I think this application is what will be the future. I think the only thing holding it back is how our bodies are tracked and the metrics behind it first. But I am actually impressed with how well they've put this app together. Yes, it does need a cleaner design. Yes, it does need to fill in some issues with its Todoist integration. But at the same time, it is going in the right direction. And I feel like this could be a really interesting app in the future. So if you enjoy this video and you want to check out more Todoist apps, maybe Life Stack isn't for you, then you can jump over to toolfinder.co if you're interested, as well as dive into more reviews that we have here on the channel. Please do subscribe if you're new, and I look forward to reviewing more apps and having rants about them. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a great week ahead, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.